Welcome to this lecture related to the building energy modeling with focus on verification and validation results. Within this lecture, I'm going to present different concepts as listed here. I will start introducing the concept of building energy modeling for building design. I will talk about the performance gap in building, introducing the scope and the definition of the verification validation process. And finally, I will present the typical model validation approaches with an example applied to a real practice. With this slide, I would like to introduce the concept of building energy modeling, explaining what is intended for. Energy modeling is the virtual or computerized simulation of a building or complex that focuses on indoor comfort and energy consumption of a various energy carrier, such as heating, cooling, lighting and hot water. The building energy models are also often used to evaluate the payback of different energy solutions like solar panels, photovoltaics, wind turbines and high efficiency appliances. The concept of virtual reconstruction is practically represented by a mathematical model that translates the physical behavior of the building components by means of a set of assumptions with the aims to predict the real world condition. Why the need of validating virtual building model? To reply to this question, it is important to introduce the concept of performance gap. Most building energy modeling is not intended to simulate the actual occupancy and operational condition, but is instead conducted for the purpose of code compliance and required energy performance certificates, and uses standardized conditions that are very different from the building actual operation. This will often lead to a significant difference between the predicted consumption and reality. In essence, the performance gap can be regarded as a combination of poor assumptions in developing the model and in selection the model input parameter at the design stage, like the non-inclusion of unregular loads and the standardized assumption for occupancy hour and controls. In other words, Current predictions tend to be unrealistically low, whilst actual energy demand is typically unnecessarily high. In light of this, the use of verified and validated building energy model will help to cover the gap between the predicted and the real operation. So that, let's go to the scope of the verification and validation process. Verification and validation are processes that have a twofold purpose. First, produce a model that represents system behavior closely enough to be a substitute for the system and be used for further investigations. Second, increase the credibility of the model to an acceptable level for managers and decision makers. Calibrated and validated building energy model can be used to investigate various energy conservation measures for feasibility and cost effectiveness studies. Calibrated building energy models can be also used to improve energy performance by optimizing building control strategies and generally to aid in decision making. The verification and validation of the simulation model represent one of the most important and difficult tasks faced by a model developer. As an aid in this process, Naylor and Finger formulated an approach to model validation that has been widely followed. Specifically, the approach consists on three main steps. The first, build a model that has high phase validity. A model should be designed with high degree of realism regarding system structure and behavior through readable data. The second, validate model assumption. There are many assumptions that are made during the building modeling. These assumptions are of two types, structural and data assumption. Structural assumptions involve simplification of reality. Data assumptions is based on collection of readable data. The third, compare the model input output transformation to corresponding input output transformation for the real system. Real data of the system must be available in order to perform this test. 
Simulation are increasingly being used to solve problems and to aid in decision making. Verification and validation of virtual models is conducted with the goal of producing accurate and credible digital models. The process is fundamental, allowing the decision makers to use the information obtained from the results of this model. In detail, the following steps are needed. First, the model must be verified and analyzing if it is correctly implemented in the simulation software. Second, the model must be calibrated comparing the prediction to the real system, making adjustment how many times is needed. The model must be validated comparing and ensuring that the model accurately represents the real-world system. The validation is usually achieved through the model calibration process. The model validation answers the question, have we built the right model? The model validation approach is composed by different steps. The first consists of running simulation considering the collected and available building characteristics. The second consists in comparing the simulation results with available real operational data. In this step, the results of the simulation are compared to utility level measurements using graphical or mathematical methods. The third consists in parameter modification. Generally, the first simulation run will not agree well with the measured data, and further investigation will be necessary. If a satisfactory agreement is not obtained, the relevant model parameter should be adjusted several times since the model is calibrated and so validated. How the discrepancies between simulation and monitoring can be evaluated? The presented table gives a classification of the validation technique used in the operational validity based on decision approach and system observability. To obtain a high degree of confidence in a simulation model and its results, comparisons of the models and systems outputs behavior for several different set of experimental conditions are usually required. Broadly speaking, there are two approaches to model validation. The first is called subjective test. This approach uses experts' intuition to validate a specific model. The examination of the model should ideally be led by someone other than the model, an expert with respect to the system rather than respect to the model. The second approach is represented by the objective test. Comparison with a real system is the most reliable and preferred way to validate a simulation model. When full measurement data is available, it might be possible to use trace-driven simulation to observe the model under exactly the same condition as the real system. If a system is not observable because it does not exist or because the measurements would be too expensive to carry out, it is usually not possible to obtain a high degree of confidence in the model. In this situation, the model behavior should be explored very carefully and comparison with other valid models is strongly suggested. As there is a large amount of data generated by simulation programs and measurement systems, it is essential to use different visualization and mathematical techniques for model validation. ASHRAE Gitline 14 2014 suggests to use the following statistical indexes to support model validation. Mean bias error. This index represents the average of the errors of a sample space. Generally, it is a good indicator of the overall behavior of the simulated data with regard to the regression line of the sample. Normalized mean bias error. This indicator is a normalization of the previous index. It is calculated divided the mean bias error by the mean of measured value, giving the global difference between the real values and the predicted ones. Coefficient of variation of the root mean square error. This index measures the variability of the error between measures and simulated values. It gives an indication of the model ability to predict the overall load shape that is reflected in the data. Values below 25% indicate a good model fit with acceptable predictive capabilities. Coefficient of determination. This index indicates how close simulated values are to the regression line of the measured values. It is another statistical index commonly used to measure the uncertainty of the models. The value is limited between 0 and 1, 
where the upper value means that the simulated data match the measures perfectly. The present slide shows an example of a model validation result. In detail, the validation of the Borolite Exchanger Water Output model of the Energon office building in Ulm, Germany, is presented. The validation process for the specific observable system has been conducting using both subjective and objective method. The graphical representation and statistical indexes have been produced and calculated using the available monitoring data. The graph reported here compares the operational water output from the Boreolit exchanger on the x-axis with the water output model results presented on the y-axis. Both the graphical and statistical indicator indicates a high degree of model confidence. In particular, the coefficient of determination proves how close simulated values are to the regression line of the measured values. Considering the high credibility of the model, it has been used for further planned system optimization and for future performance prediction. I would like to close this lecture considering that the model verification and validation is a critical phase in the development of a simulation model. Unfortunately, there is no set of specific tests that can easily be applied to determine the correctness of a model. Every simulation project presents a new and unique challenge to the model development team that always need to consider the following point. Do not become obsessed with verification and validation to the detriment of progress, causing excessive cost. A simulation model of a complex system can only be an approximation to the actual system, no matter how much time and money is spent on modeling. Modelers should select the most valuable and appropriate techniques to the particular system being modeled and to the goal of the project. Modelers have to validate and verify to assure accuracy and credibility of their models and relative results. Thank you for your attention.